Do you mind if I climb up your haystack to get into the castle? What? It'd break your stupid neck for sure. Do you think I'd stand by and see your brains dashed out? I'd be very careful, and I promise not to sue. You won't get the chance, not while I'm here to stop you. Where was the site of the Templar Preceptory? Right here, on Temple Hill. Feeling built right on top of the old wall. It's said that deep beneath these walls, there's a Templar Chapel. Did Pegram discover the chapel? I don't know. His workers were sworn to secrecy. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Do you think Pegram's disappearance is due to the curse? Look at the facts. He dug up the gem. He disappeared. Bingo! It doesn't take a degree in mathematics to work that one out, does it? You don't have to be a smarty Pythagoras with a calculator. I guess not. Pegram has run off with the gem. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right, but what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard? It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step.
The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. Hey, Billy. The animal fixed on me with an evil glare. Behind the malice and resentment, there was a cool intelligence. How you doing, boy? I felt as threatened as I'd been by the assassin and his goons in Paris. I tried in vain to move the panel. Behind the altar was a carved panel decorated with animals, birds, and plants. There was a pattern of five holes arranged on the wall. They'd been drilled there deliberately. I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. The sack contained a fine white powder. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. 